And I'm back for part four of my Road to Nerdvana series with QGIS, uh, where I'm showing you how I set up my development environment and get back into a bit of C++ coding. If you want the guru version of these <laughs> of the series, rather go and look at uh, Niall Dawson's um, uh, streaming uh, work sessions that he's posted on YouTube, uh, where he's doing much more sort of um, uh, in-depth looking through the code and things. I'm really focused on just getting set up and maybe um, I'll also later show some simple bug fixes and things, but he's definitely um, the best point of reference for um, all things like how to do it the best way. Uh, I'm really going to just be showing you now today um, a problem that I've been dealing with and how I try to solve it and I'm, I'm going to try to fix it as, as I record. I haven't already solved it, so um, uh, let's see how we go. So um, I'm in I'm in Qt Creator, and I've got debug builds enabled. You can see the little debug um, word at, underneath there. And when I try to run QGIS in debug mode, um, bad things happen. Actually, nothing happens. So um, I've been trying to look at why that happens. First, first of all, it's just recompiling quickly. Um, so I want to get to the bottom of that now. You'll see when I run, what it's going to do is going to kind of run for a bit and then crash and burn, basically. It says it's starting the debugger. And then you just have to wait and wait and wait. It starts running QGIS. And then and it gives you this really um, unuser friendly message. It says the inferior stopped because it received a signal from the operating system. I don't know about you, but that means absolutely nothing to me. I do recognize that sig seg v means a seg fault, and I see the word written out there as well. So basically, the program crashed out halfway through starting up. And that's not great, so now I can't debug my code. So I know I can build it, but I can't debug it. And the funny thing is, after running that, my normal run um, button also doesn't work. So let's see what happens when we press run. Again, it's doing quick build. I'm going to show you just now how to make the build go faster as well. We'll see if we can figure out how to do that. So it's made and the application says it crashed and now earlier when i tried to do it i got a, another message as well so i'm just going to look through the messages and see if i can find that message here um, so let me just try to run it again Okay, so now we're getting a bit more information. And you can see it's got this, again, slightly cryptic message about setting of proxys kernel yama ptrace scope. Now, I kind of know that ptrace is something about tracing libraries and basically watching them while you're executing them. And I can see that there's some things about uh, another file you could try to edit and some operation not permitted. So that makes me think it's a permissions thing. So. I did go bef before we started to record and um, just Google that same exact message and I came to this nice um, Stack Overflow uh, page which explains uh, about getting the message and how you can try to resolve it. So basically um, there are two proposed resolutions. The one is that you should the one is that you should um, try to uh, run this single command and then the guy says, well, what's a permanent solution? And so then there's another option for that. So basically the single command was to run this, which was going to basically put a zero into this ptrace scope file. 
and that's going to magically make everything work. And then if that is um, working, then somebody has suggested that we run that same command in rc.local, which is a script or it's a, um, a, a bunch of scripts that you can run. You can put it one line per script, I guess, um, inside of that file. And when the system starts, after it's finished all the other kind of startup things, it will run this rc.local file and any scripts inside of it. So I'm going to start first by just trying to run this proposed solution and see if it works. So make my console a bit bigger. Okay, so I normally just like to just do some innocuous sudo command before I try and run it in a script like that so that it won't prompt me halfway through. I think my port, my keyboard is in Portuguese mode. Okay, let's fix that. There we go. Okay, so now I've got sudos like um, in memory, whatever, you, and I can paste that command and I won't get prompted for anything. So if I kept that file, proxys kernel yama ptrace, I can see the zero that I put in there, and I'm going to try to run, uh, I'll just try to do a normal run first. Compiling again, and then we're getting a different message, so maybe it's looking a bit more optimistic. I'm going to just pull up my system monitor as well so that I can see what kind of load my system's under while I'm doing all this. You see something's grinding away on this one CPU here. Um, so I got further, but then it still died. And we've got a lot of kind of gibberish looking stuff here. And nothing really that useful to see why it died. So I'm going to try to Oh, that was just doing a normal run. I'm going to try to do a debug run now. Okay, look at my process activity. I can see lots of stuff going on now with all my cores. Okay, more things are happening. Let's see if it crashes or not. Okay, we've got the same error message now. Now we get a bit of a, a backtrace as well. We can see actually where we crashed. Now this may be actually um, a bug in the latest build of QGIS. So I want to just get uh, I'm going to just update my code to the latest in master, see if anybody's maybe fixed it. This build is currently just tracked against the, the tip of the master branch. I can see there's some new um, stuff happened there. Can have a look at the log. Um, so that was a typo fix, probably not going to fix my problem. That was another typo fix. Um, that was some um, 
something else. These are all just trivial fixes. So I, I can't see anything specifically that might be fixing my issue, but um, I'm going to just try to build it and see if the magic, if the problem magically disappears or not. He has Niles fixed from his from his stream yesterday, and there again. Okay, so. I can't see anything specific that might have fixed it, but let's just go and try to build it. I'm just going to stop all this stuff here. Now, I haven't set up CC Make and any other tricks to make the building faster. I'll cover that in a separate session. So at the moment my building is not as efficient as it could be. What CC Make basically does is it caches the object files that get compiled um, and if it sees that the file that you're compiling hasn't changed then it just reuses that cached object file. Hopefully the changes are all up in the GUI layers and they're not going to take too long to build. And basically if, if you change something down in the guts of QGIS then everything else that depends on it has to rebuild itself. So. Um, usually if the changes are up in the user interface and not down in all those libraries again if you look back look, have a look at Niall's videos giving you a walk through the code base and things if you're changing things um, at the high level then you shouldn't have to wait long while the build runs okay you can see uh, all my cores are busy working this is the um, okay so that's done now so let's see if the chance runs again with those updates See if it's saying anything interesting. Okay, it's still failing with the same error, so I don't have a fix for that right now, but I do want to see if I if the run by any chance works over here. What I'm gonna to try to do um, is go and do just a clean make and then rebuild. See if that changes anything, otherwise. I'm going to be um, asking for some community help and I'm going to record um, how I do that and the process I follow and how to try to be like ask in a nice way the community to just show you like um, you don't have to be alone if you get stuck you don't have to know everything somebody probably will help you um, but you just need to ask in a nice way and um, like give clear information and then hopefully somebody will help you so it looks to me like it's crashed out although there's still lots of cpu activity happening wait let's have a look and see okay it's crashed out so i can't see in the non-debug run uh, like when i'm not running in debug mode too much i get this bunch of stuff here it looks like the splash screen gets called and then um, there's lots of calls to settings and various other things, but um, I, wa I want to run it. I want to rebuild. I want to do a clean build first. Rebuild everything. Try to run it again. If it still doesn't work, then I'm going to send off a message. Now, the reason I'm going to do that first is because I don't want to waste everybody's time. It could be just some thing I did wrong in my system, and I'd like to know that I did it, like had the cleanest environment that I'm building from. Uh, that I'm reporting my issue against because 
it could be I was jumping branches and I left some mess behind or something like that and um, that's actually causing my problem or it could be kind of like a once-off thing that's very hard to diagnose and people might spend hours trying to figure out for me what's going on when I could just do a clean and rebuild. So uh, I'm going to hit that first. I'm going to go here and uh, just make sure everything stopped running. I'll check my activity monitor. It's gone back to nothing's going on my system. Um, I'm going to go here and clean all. I'm going to clean the whole thing. So the unfortunate part about doing a clean all is that you're gonna now have to wait. Well, I'm gonna have to wait for a long time while everything gets gets rebuilt. I'm not gonna make you wait. I'm gonna stop the video and start it again when it's done. Um, so that really just kind of like flushes out the system for us. So I'm gonna set it building, and I'm gonna quickly show you the second part of that solution for that P-trace thing, and then I'm gonna pause the video and I'll come back when it's finished building, and we can look at it managed to finish building and run. If it's still not running, I'm going to file an issue, or I'm going to actually not file an issue, I'm going to have a chat with uh, on the mailing list for the developers and say, look, I'm trying to build, I get this problem, uh, and uh, can anybody help me? And then I'll sort of, like, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you, I'll take you through the whole process that, of how I get a resolution. Uh, I'm, I'm even going to write the email on, online just so you can see my also my thought processes while I'm writing the email of like just how to approach it nicely because we, we get honestly quite a lot of people who ask for help and just give such crappy um, information or ask in such a rude way that nobody's really inclined to help them and people still help usually but it doesn't really um, I can make make people make people enthusiastic about helping so. We're going to try and just put it across very nicely what we stuck with and ask, ask for help. All right, so let's set the build off again. And um, I just want to stop it straight away because I saw a red message showing here. Um, So it's complaining about this ver this version and this version being different, which makes me a bit worried that there may be still something um, going on in my system. Okay, it may be nothing. It may be fine. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'm going to do the second part of that help that we got from this person. Basically, their suggestion is to do this without sudo in rc.local. So, copy that text again. Um, my sudo is timed out already. No, it's not. Okay, so I can do sudo then um, etcrc.local. So, Let's see, I don't have an rc.local already. Um, I'm going to just try to just add it and see if it gets run. I probably need to make it executable as well. So I'm going to put this in the top here because I don't know if it puts in a bash environment when you're running it. And then I'm going to put that line in. And then I'm going to take the pseudo part out of this line because it's running as root when we run this command. And I'm going to make that executable. I need to be root to do that. Okay, so we could test that it runs and does the expected thing by just like. Um, I'm just going to echo nothing into um, that file, which was in uh, mm, find it again here.
where my Unix command line skills are leaving me in the lurch here, but um, let's see what's in there now. Just going to edit it by hand. I'm just trying to just check that the um, the little RC local script does what it's supposed to do. Now this is not actually a real file that I'm editing here, so it could be why it's complaining. Maybe I have to ed uh, echo zero uh, one into it, for example. It's like yeah, there we go. So it's a it's a system file handle, but it's not actually a normal file. It's a kernel setting basically, so I can't really do what I was trying to do. I'm, under Unix, everything is a file and it's file system, even like all the settings and kernel settings and everything. So um, I put it back to one, and then I'm going to run my RC local script. Um, and you can see that it, after it ran, it's changed it back to. Um, Zero, which is what we wanted to do. And I'll check after the next reboot that it's still got that setting. All right, so I'm going to stop recording here because that might take a little while. And then I'm going to come back after the build is completed and we'll see if it doesn't run. If it doesn't run, um, I'll show you the process I followed to get some help. Okay, so I'm back and um, I did a clean, I did a rebuild, I tested it again, it's still doing the same thing, it's still crashing when I try to run it, um, chewing up a lot of CPU time in the beginning and then just not, not actually running. Um, and I'm not really sure why, so I'm going to show you now the process I do to uh, send an email to the developer list asking for help. I think this is probably one of the most overlooked and poorly described things about working in open source project is just how to get help from people. I often get in my personal inbox, people will just write me that they don't introduce themselves, they don't um, explain their problem well, they just expect me to do stuff for them and you know, I try to help people but I'm also busy and um, sometimes just a little bit of social um, grace can help um, sort of stream, <laughs> streamline and motivate the person, I guess, on the other end of the email to actually respond to you. Just bear in mind that in most cases, the person can be a volunteer. Someone like myself is sitting waiting through their own inbox trying to decide whether to spend effort replying to you or not. So. I'm going to show you how I would go about writing a nice report. Uh, well, I'm not even going to write a bug, this bug, tick, uh, bug report for this point because I don't know, it could be just me doing something dumb. It's probably not a, not a bug in QGIS. could be, but I want to find out first. Uh, we've got the developer mailing list um, in QGIS, which is really great. Um, let me see if I can bring up. Um, a page with a mailing list on it here, quickly, just to show you. So, if you just type QGIS mailing list into your search engine, uh, you'll get to this page here. And we've got, uh, what do we have? Four pages, five, uh, four or five mailing lists actually. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. So, People often find these mailing lists, and that's great that they find them, but then they go and subscribe to the wrong one, and they don't really read what the mailing list is about. So for example, we've got this community team one, it says quite clearly that it deals with topics about documentation, the website, blogs, mailing lists, forums, and translation. So that's what you're supposed to use if you've got issues relating to those things. And then we'll often get somebody who signs up there and sends a technical C++ question. Now, that's fine, we'll try and send, send it on to somewhere where they can get help, but the point is that um, by joining this list and asking the wrong kind of question, you waste your own time, you waste the time of the people that have to answer you to send you to the right place, instead of just carefully reading first, what are you signing up for? 
and then choosing something appropriate. So if we look at the developers list line, you can see that this is for questions about the development of QGIS core or plugins. You can discuss about coding, the build process, chime in, collect and discuss QGIS related user experience and usability issues. So this is much more appropriate to what I'm trying to do than this list or the users list which is for end user questions where people want to know how do I load my shape file or how do I convert from one format to another or something like that. Um, and just while I'm running through these lists we've also got a translations list which hopefully as the name indicates that's used for collaborating with other translators, planning the translation effort and so on. Then we've got the QGIS project steering committee which is intended for people who want to raise something to like the management of the project or the community that um, like does the, the forward planning for the project. So again, when we had, I think just the other day, somebody wrote a, a technical C++ question to this list. And, you know, and I replied to them and said, oh, please ask in the developer list, but you, know, you could have got your answer much faster by just signing up to the right list. And also you avoid sort of um, cluttering up this list with questions that are not relevant. And then we've got this last one here, which is for the web client. So um, I'm going to be composing a message to the developer list. I've, I've made sure that I've chosen the right list to write to. And when I'm going to write my message, I'm going to try to put a few different um, elements into my message to try and give myself the best shot of somebody wanting to answer me. Uh, I can't tell you exact, with an exact science what should go into a message to get somebody to be motivated to help you, but I can kind of tell you things that you shouldn't do. The one is it shouldn't be overly long. You should try to focus just on one topic, one like, atomic thought or, or issue, because if you write 10 different issues, uh, your communication is just going to get lost. Maybe somebody will answer on one, Somebody else will answer in another, other eight things might just get forgotten. Um, so we're going to keep it to one issue. Um, you should try to provide enough background about what you're trying to do without being overly, overly perverse. There are also some limitations on the mailing list. You can't send very, very large messages to the mailing list. Or like, for example, you can't send a 30 megabyte sample data set or, or image screenshot or whatever. So, that means if you want to share screenshots, you need to upload them to a platform like Imager. Or if you want to share long code dumps, you should put them in GitHub or uh, some online paste bin or something like that where somebody else can go and look on their website, on their website if they want to. Um, it's always nice to be polite when you write a message and not just sort of dive in like, um, I, like, you know, this is a bad message. I want to help with my problem. And you tell about all your, all your problems, like, who are you? Like, why, why do you, you know, why should we be helping you? So, um, if you're new to this, I would suggest you to write something like, you know, dear, do you just go to this? Um, it already starts with a nice note, you see. Um, or hi, Q developers, or whatever you want to say, but something friendly. Um, and so if you, the first time, or the first couple of times, just say like, you know, hi, I am Dan from Mexico, or whatever, you know. Just like kind of, you know, you don't have to give your life story, but just, um, you, you, could, you could just introduce yourself a little bit and let us know why, what, you know, what, who are you, what are you doing? Um, just to make a bit of human interest for us to empathize with you. So, um, for the most part, people on developer just know me already, so I'm not going to do that, but I am going to say, um, you know, what are we trying to do? And I'm just going to kind of keep quiet and type a bit. I'm going to just record what I type and so let's see if I can make my fonts a bit bigger. I'm an old guy, I can't see well on small fonts, and I want you to be able to see what I'm typing as well. So I'm just going to pump up the font size like that. That's nice and easy to read. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so yeah, I'm just stating like what the basis of my like my objective is, and uh, then I'll say. Check exactly what the button is called here. Um, so I'm going to look for the cheat, uh, the tooltip. stated what my problem is that I'm trying to run QGIS and debug when I launch it it crashes and um, then I'm going to just give a little bit of context so um, I'm going to say what, what platform I'm building it on what version of QGIS um, here to see what, uh, in the kit. So I can see here I'm using GCC compiler, could be using Clang as well or I don't know, I guess something else. Um, and so I'm just going to put a bit of uh, information in GCC. say what the bold flags are so um, uh, and I'm basically going to say CMake build type is debug So one thing I could be trying to do while figuring it out is I could actually roll back, say three four days ago when I was when my build was running and uh, not crashing like this, and see uh, if that's still the case because maybe um, it is something in the code that could work and I'm just kind of the only one who's experiencing it from other people for some reason not getting that issue. Um, so that could be something I could try when I've sent uh, when I've sent with my email. So I'm keep like, figuring it out myself. So um, so I've told him what the environment is that I'm doing. Um, uh, that and I could say 64 bit. Yeah, and then I could say. Now I'm going to give them some little bit of information about what the error messages that I see when I try to run. So this is quite a lot of information to put into one message. So I could put the whole thing in the, in, in the email, but it's, 
yeah, it might be just a bit too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to GitHub and use um, their, um, what's the thing called? They just the just tool, which is basically just a way to paste some code and share it with people. So I'm going to stick that all in there and it's going to say QGIS startup error. Okay, I'm going to create this as a public just. Um, I'm going to just scan. No, it's actually interesting because I'm actually still seeing the same error and the same error, which I'm not expecting to see because I thought I had set this to. And that is a bug with Ubuntu with a proper race or GNOME or something. But, um, Let's have a look what's in that um, So I'm, not, I'm surprised to be still seeing this error message here Because I thought I'd actually address this Sometimes you'll find that um, there's this thing called rubber ducking So why, why are you trying to tell somebody about your problem? You might actually figure out what your problem is yourself And so like by me pasting this in to this guest, I might, or just, or however you pronounce it, um, I might actually f see something that gets me thinking about what might be the answer to my problem. So, yeah, I want to go and have another look at that because I'm not, ex I wasn't expecting to see that. Um, we'll try again as the root user. I'm going to have a little run as root just to see. So let's run this as root and see what happens. Pseudo rather. I could have gone around and like enabled um, remote X from the root account and my local account, but I kind of realized that's more work than I need to be doing. So let's do it like that. Uh -huh. So that's interesting. So it is something to do with permissions. This is the first to run screen. I can see I'm building master. I know that um, I'm not actually running it in a debugger now, so that's still not solving my essential problem that I can see. If I do that same command without the pseudo, let's see what happens. I think it's going to kind of flap around and die now. So I kind of narrowed it down to that there's some permissions issue here. Yeah. I'm going to go and give that another Google and see if I can figure out why I'm getting this message over here. So this thing it says I should have a look in this file, so let's go and have a look here. Okay, that crashed and burned. So it says the ptrace is used for debugging, 
that a single user process can attach to any other type of process owned by the same user. In the case of mis malicious software, it is possible to use ptrace to access credentials that exist in memory. The ptrace scope of zero is the more permissive mode. The scope of one limits ptrace only to direct child processes. Okay, so they give us some tip here about using this PR control, your set PT tracer debugger PID. Um, so it defaults to one, we've set it to zero. Um, that and the default is to set the ptrace scope to 1. This value may not be appropriate for developers or servers. Let's try and edit that. I'm going to be rude to do that. Set that to 0 and try run our application again. See if it changes anything. So it's still not looking good, I don't think, because the last time when I ran it as root, it stood up pretty much straight away. <clears throat> but now, it's sitting around, it looks like it's doing its crash thing again. Or maybe not, let's have a look. Oh, okay, yeah, so it crashed up. And let me just confirm if I do that again. Start up straight away. It's, it's, it's a very different experience. These bug, these bugs, oh, crashes are just some plugin things. Okay, so why is it so different when we run it as a user? We've already tried changing this. It didn't help. I like things back again till I know why I've changed it. So I'm gonna go and just do the broken one again. Take another look at the error message and then just Google for that. And we've got it here anyway. It's this uh, and then try to do like a cute creator and that cute Okay, there's a special note here. Um, okay, I did that. I did that already. And this person says if re if running Ubuntu, I probably didn't read enough down this um, thread. The recommended way to enable the needed P trace kernel setting is to edit that one and change that to zero oh, which I did but then okay I had to do another step as well here okay so let's try to do that so let's go back and change that to zero and then run this extra command uh, It's complaining. But that seems to be something unrelated and it actually did show the output here that we expected to see here. So there might be something else on my system which is not great. 
Uh, let's just give it another try and see. Okay, it still looks like it's not working. I can see already it started over there. And I'm going to go try to run it in the debug mode in the debugger because just try everything and see if it makes a difference. Okay, so crashing, 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 crashing. Okay, let's see what happens when you try to run a chain. and reading down this thread while I'm waiting for it just to see if there was any other advice. No, so it's still not working. Let's keep on reading a bit more. So this guy's recommending to run kit create as root. We could try that. Um, <coughs> not really that keen to do that, but... Maybe we need to do both of these things. We could try to do this one as well. So this guy's warning about why I don't want to run Qt Creator as root. This guy's got another answer. Okay, it looks like a far simpler answer. Just check, just uncheck or check, run, uncheck. If for some reason uncheck the box, run in terminal in projects on the left bar. Let's go over here, projects. And the run. There's supposed to be a run in terminal option here. Yeah, this one here. So he said check or run uncheck if for some reason uncheck. Box. So it sounds like we need to just basically play around with that option there. So let's check that. Um, we got to stop this debug build that we're still trying to run and start it again. Ooh, something happened there. We've got a terminal flashing up. Um, yeah, it's actually made a second terminal window there. Mm. Still can't see anything happening in the application though. Okay, let's see what's happening. Okay, crashed and died again. So let's try go back to projects, uncheck again. Stop and run again. Now what I don't like about this kind of solution is that uh, it's not very logical, so there's not really an explanation. 
I don't know what I'm really doing, I'm just trying stuff. But um, that's okay, I'm going to try anyway and see if it helps and then maybe I can go find an explanation later as to why it worked. If it does work. Okay, this is usually the part where the crash happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, crash again. And then, if I read clearly, it said run, check, run, and check. If for some reason it is unchecked, um, okay, so that doesn't seem to be helping a jot. I'm going to try one more time like that. I didn't expect it to start working now, it hasn't been working the last time. Okay, so that's probably a reason why it's sitting at number five in the bottom of the you know, the rank number five in the in the responses because it doesn't seem to work. We don't right where you want to run as root. I think we've done this already, we can just, just check this again. Still on zero. Pretty sure that's going to crash, yep, there we go. And it's quite amazing how much faster um, Q just starts when you're root as well. Let's have a look again. I mean, that's very quick, just almost instant start. So there's something else going on as well that makes it slow to start when you're not running it as root. But that's again an example of, like, I don't want to cloud the issue when I write my mail to the mailing list saying I'm having a problem. I'm not going to tell them about both things to start. I think I'll just focus on the one thing, which is that it won't start. Then I can come later with another discussion about why it starts so slowly. Um, they may well be related, but um, for now we'll treat them as separate things. Okay, so uh, let's go and take this link here and say and copy that so that we can put it in our message saying uh, what we're gonna have a section here on what I've tried. And the reason we put that is um, so that Somebody doesn't spend time giving us the same advice or searching for stack overflow, or stack overflow to send us to the same place. We already tried that. We don't want that advice. We want something that's um, sort of above that, that's going to be more um, relevant than that. So I, I would give some feedback now as to what the error message is. So I have already put that message in my um, gist here. So I'm going to take this link and I'm going to copy it um, here. Let's see. There's this sort of um, tradition in the QGIS list when you want to give links that you kind of separate them away from the message. So I'm going to do that just to show you. So I'm going to put the link number one there. Um, and then I'm going to put 
link number two there. Um, I'm going to put a tiny snippet of the thing so that somebody who's going to follow these links, they might see just enough to trigger um, memory and the answer with them. So I'm just going to put uh, this part over here. Uh, let's just do even that part there. Let me say um, I'm just going to give them the full version and then that for the short version. Um, and I'm going to explain how I googled it and I found the whole thing by Petros. So what I've tried to read in code by the above there, there's probably enough, it's 30 lines of text, we've got a little bit of the code, of, of the log information, I've given enough background about what I'm trying to do, what operating system I'm on, um, what the symptoms are of the problem, what I've tried, and um, then I'm just make my appeal for help. So. to help me if you can and I've said thank you already in advance just try to be very friendly not confrontational short but very informative of like exactly what the issue is if somebody asks more information um, and they can't find it in these links or whatever then I'll go and dig around and give them more information but now I'm going to like, cut off the video okay, I'm going to go send this and then I'm going to join back again once uh, if once somebody writes back to me and if nobody writes back to me, I'll also join again and then figure out what I'm going to do next and you can follow along. Alright, so we'll be back once we get some response from the mailing list. Okay, I'm back again. I'm sorry if the audio quality changed a bit in the recording last night uh, when I was adding bits onto this recording because maybe it was it was late at night I was speaking a bit quietly um, so I just want to continue updating you on where I am in sorting out the issue that I was having with QGIS crashing and reporting the issue to the mailing list and so on so uh, in the interim since I sent that message 
I got a reply from Niall Dawson, which I'm going to show you. Um, I'm also going to just show you like how you actually can find previous messages to QGIS developer list. So we have uh, this a site called Nabble, and it's not affiliated with QGIS, but they seem to archive a bunch of different mailing lists around the world. So uh, if you type Nabble and then QGIS developer, and then um, maybe just on its own, you can find the archives there. Um, you can also go to the mailing list themselves. So, um, and there's archives there. So Nabble's quite good in that, like you can search on that. Um, so I'm gonna go and just show you the, the archive from last night's, in this morning's discussions. Actually, after I signed off, I built QGIS again. I tried a whole bunch of different things. I mean, it's your responsibility to try everything you can to figure out the, the solution as well as just asking for help. You know, it's um, people will help you so far, but you've got to help yourself as well. So you can see in the archives, um, if you look for the one that I started here, QGIS debug builds fail to launch. So um, after I sent that message, I, I, um, I should note that I left out one thing that I should have added, which was the QGIS version that I was building. So I had meant to add it into my initial email. And that would have been, you know, just helpful to explain like exactly which um, uh, git commit number I was building against because sometimes things uh, come and go depending on which version of git uh, of the git checkout you have. So I filed my issue and then um, uh, put all the information together there and then I got a reply from um, can see uh, next in thread. Let's go quickly here. Yeah. Next message by thread. So um, we'll get that one there. And then I, I sent a follow-up message saying, by the way, I was poking around a bit more and I saw that there was a certain line that it seemed to be um, crashing out on. So I, didn't, I wasn't sure if it was relevant, but I just added the, the bit of extra information. And then I sort of started to doubt myself a bit, so I sent another message saying, um, sorry, that might not be relevant. So, um, as it turned out, it actually was relevant because then Niall saw that and replied, uh, grab this fix. So I went and looked at the fix that he made and he'd actually changed something in that line that I was reporting. So he, um, this was the line that was crashing it um, and he added some extra logic in here. I'm not so familiar with this code, so I don't know exactly what he was doing, but I do know that um, I, went, I went and took that, checked it out, and built it. And uh, then my queue just started to, to run when I pressed this run button here, like you can see now. So he basically, by me reporting the issue in the mailing list, he realized that there was something that some code that either he was familiar with or that he'd been working on that had caused this um, hang. So he went and fixed it. And so now my queue, queue just runs um, in the non-debugger um, run, fine. And then I went to test it with the debugger because that was my goal is to run it in the debugger. And um, it takes much longer to start in the debug debugger. And when it was, um, when it's starting up, it's giving some error messages. So uh, these error messages are kind of a bit harder to interpret because they're somewhere deep in some disassembled C library or C code. And I couldn't really make out what was going on. But what I did was I just um, clicked next and continue, next, continue through those error messages. And I saw that the, the debug is actually running. I've just got this sort of slightly annoying thing at the start of when I start the debugging session, which I'm going to show you now. So you'll see the splash screen comes up, which is a step further than we had um, before. And now I get these messages and you can see it's happening somewhere deep in the disassembled um, file of, um, not even sure which library we're in here. But it looks like it's something to do with uh, threading and uh, some system internal thread um, support library or something like that. So 
If I click OK here and press continue, and I keep doing that, um, I'll just do it with the keyboard to make it faster, then about after three or four or five of those messages, then QGIS will start up. So I don't know why that is, I'm not like um, intimate enough with that part of the code to go and debug it at this stage. But I did make a note of exactly what's showing on this dialogue here. And then I sent a follow-up email saying, thank you, your, your fix has helped me get past my initial problem. I can debug it now, but I'm still having an issue. So we'll see QGIS will come up and I'm going to just show you in the browser here if we go back and look at the thread here if we go to the, the there, so there's QGIS starting now it's in debug mode if I go back to look in the thread here I just wanted to show you my follow-up message so I replied again I didn't reply even though Niall helped me I didn't reply specifically to Niall because I don't want to make the presumption that because he helped me once that he's committed to helping me all through my problem there may be other people that can pick up from where I was and help me uh, from this point forward. So um, I thanked him for the fix and this goes back again to what I was saying um, earlier in this session that if you want people to help you, being polite and friendly and acknowledging the help is going to go a long way towards getting help from them compared to just being um, uh, un, um, what's the word, um, un, in, ungrateful and you know, just expecting that they help you for, or for if, you know, they don't get paid to do this. So the only reward he's getting is my thanks. So I'm going to make sure to give him that thanks. Um, so, okay, I made a bit of a, 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 a boo-boo because I said thanks twice, but I'm sure you won't mind being thanked twice. Um, and I sort of then explained what I'm getting now, which is what I just showed you, that I can run it, but I get this strange message. I try to copy exactly the message that I was getting and I showed them an example of like the where the code was stopping um, and um, and so I basically followed up and you know if you help somebody and they don't ever tell you whether you, your help their help helps you or not uh, it's very unsatisfying for them because they you know they don't know if their intervention actually was useful or not they don't get that feedback um, even if you're not thanking them just feeding back to them to say it works now gives them a sense of closure on the thing so um, for me it's not closed because I still got this issue but I just kept a follow up going alright and so I'm going to stop um, recording like in this session around about here because it's already been a long session but I hope that um, beyond the technical things about you know debugging and poking around in code and stuff that there is some value in what I've just been showing you, just in how to deal with the community. Maybe you don't even know how to code and you've got a problem and you're looking for someone to help you. Um, being, being cordial and taking time to write your, your request for help nicely and try to understand the psychology of the people that you're asking um, for help from will go a long way in getting your, help, um, your request for help responded to. If you look in our mailing list, you'll see a lot of messages that don't go get responded to just because a person didn't take the time to actually uh, sort of think about the people that he's asking for help, think about the fact that they're not paid to help you, they're doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. And if you do take that into account, uh, you'll get much faster help. I think another area we, which helps you to get help quickly is um, by your reputation and um, your history of helping others yourself. So for example, I, I have noticed that if one of the other community members asks for help, they generally get help much more quickly, A, because they kind of know how to ask for help nicely, and B, because they've already been spending their own effort helping others, and the people around them see that and, and want to support that. And if you're just coming out of the blue and you're asking for help and you've got a long, deep, complicated question, and you've never ever contributed anything and now you're asking people to contribute a lot of their time to you and, and you can imagine there's just not much incentive or there's not the same incentive to go and help that person so i hope this session's been useful to you all and um, 
uh, in the next session, I probably will dig into actually debugging a bit more, and I'm going to I want to try to do some small tweaks to the user interface and things. Um, actually, just very very simple things and kind of walk you through that process. So, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.